From Target Field in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Root Sports brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight, the Astros open a three-game weekend series against the Minnesota Twins. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Jeff Blum, along with Julia Morales, who comes along in a few minutes. The Astros winning two out of three, Blummer, at Yankee Stadium, and they've been on a wave of pitching unlike any this club has ever seen. Yeah, the pitching's been good and actually had the offense pick him up, but, man, what these guys are doing with that baseball in their hand is pretty impressive. We'll take a look at the story. Since August 5th, the starting pitchers and the bullpen have been working together in sync. Well, they've been absolutely lights out. The beauty of the bullpen doing such a good job is because those starters are going out there and putting up numbers like you're seeing right here. ERA under two, but the big number for me, the walks are down to 32. They're going to pitch to contact, and that low walk ratio tells you that they are going after the strike zone, letting these guys hit, and allowing that defense to go out and play behind them, shutting other teams down completely. They've got even better at Yankee Stadium. The starters had a 0.84 ERA. Yeah, and this shouldn't happen at a place like Yankee Stadium. New York Yankees vying for that top spot, the AL East. Astros come in on a big stage in the Big Apple and absolutely just obliterate that offense for the New York Yankees. If there wasn't concern before, there's a lot of concern now with how they're going to match up against good pitching down the stretch. And now as they take this uh, starting pitching into this series in Minnesota, and it has been quite a run of starting pitching with Colin McHugh, really about as strong as anybody the last few starts. Here at Target Field, it's a pitcher's park. The Twins have some threats, though, including Miguel Sano, but he's not in the lineup tonight. Yeah, that might be a good thing for the Astros because he has been swinging the bat so well. He's got eight home runs in this month of August. Eduardo Escobar is another guy in their infield, another young talent, brought up through this system, doing a great job for these guys. But young talent, much like the Houston Astros, putting up big numbers, and they're counting on these kids down the stretch here in August heading into September. Coming up, twin killing. The road to the playoffs gets no easier. The Astros do business with a Twins team, only a half game out of the wild card. Can Scott Casimir kickstart the Astros to another series win? Lineups and first pitch are straight ahead. percent or more on car insurance visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO and by southwest airlines book your low fare now at southwest.com 
Coming up, target practice. Evan Gaddis and the Astros took down the Bronx Bombers and reversed their offensive fortunes on the road in the process. Julia Morales has more on how their plans for target practice in Minneapolis go when we return. trip as they start a three-game series with the Minnesota Twins. They're coming off of a day off, but before that, taking two of three from the New York Yankees, and those road wins, very big for a club who had struggled on the road here recently, but the way that they did it, gave them some confidence moving forward. Some big days offensively for this club in the last two wins against the Yankees. It's our AT&T Rewind as we take a look back at some of those games, starting with that second game. They struggled in that first game, but turn it around. Check out Carlos Gomez with a big three-run homer as he seems to get his back going a little bit. Also, Marwin Gonzalez with a big home run. So we saw the power from this team. They lead the majors in homers with 174, but the very next day to win the series, taking this game with a big fifth inning. The way this team manufactured runs that day was something A.J. Hinch really liked to see back to back to back singles for this club as they drove in three runs. You see Marizic putting down the bunt there, finding just different ways to get those runs across, which is really good uh, when you talk about this team and how good they are at hitting the homers, but they're showing that they can do it in other ways. So I talked about the road struggles earlier. Check this out. In their last 11 road games, in their last two games, they scored 20 run runs, but before that, in the previous 9 20, uh, that's just how different those last two games were. Of course, 15 runs against the Yankees and all across the board. The runners in scoring position, of course, a big one right there, and the extra base hits for this club. Uh, a lot of fun to see them. Doubles for, for Carlos Gomez in there, I think was one of the highlights just to see him kind of break out of some. And some of these other guys, too, putting together some big hits. And guys, I toss this up to you with a day off like that. It's hard to carry over momentum, but you hope to see this club hang on to that offense, especially with the way the starting pitching's been. Thank you, Julia. And it shouldn't be that tough for these guys. They've got good mojo going right now. They know what they're about to accomplish. And I think that that day off yesterday actually gave them a chance to maybe dwell on the fact that they are playing so well. Remember some of those good times in New York and have it carry over here in Minnesota. So I'm looking forward to another good offensive series here in Minnesota against a pitching staff who's been roughed up since the All-Star break. These two teams meeting now twice in the next three series. So six of the next nine games are against each other. Tonight's Astros starting lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It's Jose Altuve leading it off and playing second base tonight. Jed Lowry's in the number two spot for only the second time this year. He's at third base tonight. 
Evan Gaddis, the DH bats third with Colby Rasmus in right field. Carlos Gomez in center. Luis Valbuena at first base. Marwin Gonzalez is the shortstop. Carlos Correa resting on a sore hamstring. Jason Castro, the catcher. Jake Marisnik, the left fielder. Big right-hander for the Minnesota Twins. Kyle Gibson had some success last year against the Houston Astros, as you see on that bottom third right there. 2-0 record with that ERA under one. Did a good job. We know the Astros are a high strikeout team. He does a good job of mixing the sinker, change up, gets a lot of ground ball, double plays, but he also had that slider to go along with it. The thing for me on Kyle Gibson is pre-All-Star break, 2.85 ERA. Post-All-Star break, 7.22. So look for the Astros to continue that trend with the hot bats that came from New York swinging. The big 6-6 right-hander is 27, was a first-round pick. In 09, he's 8 and 9 with a 3.96 ERA. As Blummer said, he has struggled here, especially in August, with a 6.35 ERA. He is not getting double play balls the way he did in the first half of the season. And the batting average against him in August is 303 with runners in scoring position. Now the Astros hope to continue that trend because he was just simply great against them last year with those two games we talked about earlier. Now it's Jose Altuve getting set to lead it off on a beautiful evening here in Minnesota. Altuve with 10 homers has 52 runs batted in and a 309 batting average with a 353 on base average. And he takes the first pitch at strike one. Ben Mays, the home plate umpire. Gibson is 23 and 25 in his career with a 4.54 ERA. It's a one ball one strike count 70 degrees at game time winds from the south southeast at 14 blowing from left to right it's a pitcher's ballpark. Now Tuve's out in front it's one ball two strikes for the Astros offense tied with the twins offense exactly the same number of runs scored for the year 553 they're both tied for eighth place in runs scored in the American League. It's two balls, two strikes, and the Twins are coming off a road trip with a six and four record. They started by being swept in a three game series at Yankee Stadium. The Astros won a road series of three games for the first time since late April. And the pitcher's there, and he will have to make the play. One unassisted. Trevor Plouffe broke for the baseball, so Gibson took care of that one. Around the outfield, Shane Robinson in left, Byron Buxton in center field, Eddie Rosario in right. On the left side, Eduardo Nunez at third, Eduardo Escobar at short, Brian Dozier at second base, Trevor Plouffe at first base, and Kurt Suzuki behind home plate for the Minnesota Twins. Twins got back in the wee hours of the morning after a tough loss at Tampa Bay. Jed Lowry steps up. 231, five homers. He's driven in 17. And he looks at ball one. Gibson really made some pitches on Altuve. Lowry has a 338 on base average. He takes it for a strike, and it's one and one for Gibson. These are two of the surprise teams in the American League this year. The Astros with a five game lead over Texas. The Twins a half game out of the second wild card spot. Grounded to shortstop, Eduardo Escobar, two outs. And it'll be Evan Gaddis coming up. Gaddis is on a four-game hitting streak. He hit two homers in the Wednesday afternoon game at Yankee Stadium. 243, 22 homers to equal his major league high in a season. 69 runs batted in, leads the Astros. That's ball one with the infield shifted around playing Gaddis to pull. The Astros and Twins split their six game season series a year ago. Evan takes it and the counts even at one and one. Here at Minnesota last year it was an eight nothing shutout win for Gibson over Scott Feldman. Ground ball to shortstop. 
And Escobar throws him out. Three ground ball outs in the end, and Gibson's on his game. He puts up the first zero. Hander Gibson. Now it is Scott Casimir going to work for Houston. Scott has the third best ERA in the American League. It's Byron Buxton in center field for Paul Molitor. Eduardo Escobar is a hot hitting shortstop. Brian Dozier batting third tonight at second base. Trevor Plouffe is the first baseman and cleanup man. With Eddie Rosario in right field, Torrey Hunter the DH, Eduardo Nunez at third base, Kurt Suzuki the catcher, and Shane Robinson in left field. Scott Casimir, left hander. Faced the Minnesota Twins already twice this year, one and one. Went six innings the first time, giving up six earned runs here at Minnesota. But faced them back in Oakland and went eight in the third innings, only giving up one earned run. Byron Buxton takes the first pitch, and it's ball one to Buxton. 225, no homers, two runs batted in for the talented rookie. Drafted right behind Carlos Correa in the number two overall spot in 2012. That's in the air to left center. Marisnik looks over at Gomez. Gomez with the call and the catch. Chance to see Carlos Gomez out there in center field again. He's flanked by Jake Marisnik on the left. Kobe Rasmus on the right. On the left side of the infield, Jed Lowry at third. Marwin Gonzalez at shortstop for Carlos Correa, who's nursing a hamstring. Jose Altuve at second base. Luis Valbuena at first. And Jason Castro behind home plate. Eduardo Escobar has unleashed a flurry of extra base hits in the last week. This man has been on fire. They strike one to Escobar. 256, eight homers, 40 runs batted in for the switch hitting shortstop. He homered again last night at Tampa Bay. He's hit three in his last two games. So he and Evan Gaddis have that in common. It's one ball, two strikes for Scott Casimir, trying to square his record at eight and eight. Traded July 23rd for a couple of prospects. He's made six starts for the Astros. The Astros have won three of those games. That's hit to center field. Gomez. Two outs. Gomez, a former twin, has made the first two plays in this game, and now it's going to be Brian Dozier. Dozier, an all star this year for the Twins, who won 70 games last year, as did the Astros, and lost 92. 244, 26 homers, 66 runs batted in. More home runs than any Twins middle infielder in their history. He's fourth with 87 runs scored in the majors. Strike one to Dozier. And eighth in the American League in total bases right now.
Asmir missing inside goes to a one ball one strike count. This Houston starting pitching is on an unbelievable run right now. Yeah, I mean, if you had to pick one aspect of the game that is uh, to credit for their success, it is definitely the starting staff. One and two. The Astros have allowed two runs or less for nine consecutive games now. That's a club record. Scott Feldman, a big part of that. And just on down the line, there have been six starting pitchers contributing to that streak. Colin McHugh and Lance McCullers alongside each other. McCullers goes Sunday here. Two balls, two strikes. Well, think about who they're doing that against, too. It was the L.A. Dodgers to finish off the homestand. Then they go into New York and dominate them. And now they're going to have to try and do it against another team contending. So it hasn't been too many slouches these guys have been dealing against. Excellent point. The Astros have won seven of their last nine games. They are currently 14 games above 500. And that ties their high for the season. So A.J. Hinch's club has been winning games for the last 10 days differently with lower scoring type affairs. It's got to be promising to him to see those guys able to punch out a couple singles and score some runs. Struck him out and both pitchers look sharp and a scoreless first. Astro season tickets are on sale now. Guarantee your seats for a potential 2015 postseason run by reserving your 2016 season tickets today. Visit Astros.com slash season tickets or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. George Springer returning from the DL sooner than later. I know Houston fans are excited to see this right here. He's been taking BP on the field with the team. He had a day off yesterday, took BP early today before having a meeting with Nate Lucero, the head trainer, and A.J. Hinch. Feeling good today about his bat speed, of the way his hand felt as far as strengthening. And so they will send him out to double-A Corpus Christi. He'll meet the team tomorrow in Corpus. He will play right field and lead off. And from there, they'll have to gauge how many games it will take him to feel pretty good. He might have a day off every once in a while just as he works his way back for to full strength, guys. Thanks, Julia. There's a foul ball leading off the second inning. Colby Rasmus fouling it for strike one. Colby at 230 has 17 long balls. He's driven in 46. He is two for three in his career against Kyle Gibson. Colby went three for 11, driving in two in the Yankee series. That pitch is up, and it's a one ball, one strike count. Now the Astros really into it. Every game of utmost importance right now. And Carlos Correa sits out because of some discomfort in the left hamstring area. Not thought to be serious. He's pretty sure he'll be back in there tomorrow. George Springer heads for Corpus Christi. Maybe for just a few days, perhaps to return next week. But there is caution on the part of uh, the Astros dealing with both players. 
Rasmus with a swing two and two they do have a five game lead every game of utmost importance but the worst thing is to lose a player for a large block of time and of course they've already lost George Springer for two months. Yeah losing another key player like Carlos Correa would be extremely detrimental to the rest of their season and hamstrings are kind of funny too you don't know what you're going to get if it's a sore you feel a little bit of a tweak. It's a good move by the Astros to give them a couple days off. It actually worked out pretty good having that day off yesterday gives them that extra time off without missing a game but if you rush that back and he tweaks it even more you know he'll go on the DL much like uh, Yasiel Puig just did too with the Dodgers. Rasmus puts one in the air deep right center field loping over for it Buxton. Ball doesn't seem to be carrying very well and that's not a surprise is it. Yeah this really has, target field has not been conducive to the home run. Not entirely sure why and it seems to have reasonable dimensions out there it's gorgeous. Much much of a beautiful upgrade compared to the Metrodome. You bet it is. <laughs> In every aspect I can imagine. Yes. It was rough on the field. I don't know what it was like for you guys up there. <laughs> well it wouldn't be on many people's lists of <laughs> top five favorite major league parks. Let's put it that way. There's ball one to Gomez. So Gomez comes back to the twins. He was traded to them for Johan Santana in 08 by the New York Mets. Played here for years from 08 and 09 and then he moved on to Milwaukee. So for Carlos he has fairly deep roots in this organization and he's had good series against the twins before. One ball one strike. 350 is his career batting average against them with six homers 20 runs batted in. He rips that one foul that pitch in on his hands and he got around on it. One and two on Gomez. Smelling his back. No, smelling kissing. Yeah. Talking. Take a look at our strike zone brought to you by MD Anderson. This pitch well inside. I think he was swinging with malicious intent. You bet he was. He jammed on that one too and tied up for a one two count still. Well he delivered one and you know you might say that Joe Girardi fired him up in New York when they exchange words as he hit that three run homer Tuesday night in the seventh inning after the dust up with Girardi. The roller and Suzuki throws him out. That's five in a row set down by Gibson. We check around this ballpark and it is on our recommended list for Astros visiting ballparks especially if the Astros are going to be up here in August where the weather is quite nice April and September October might be a little bit different but plenty of stuff going on they revamped it honoring some past ball players with the statues you see Minnie and Paul and I know that lower right is what you've been waiting for right there you went out and tested those local favorites yesterday didn't you Brownie got to be a part of it Blummer got to immerse yourself in the local community when you travel walleye on a stick yeah about the only thing we didn't find at the Minnesota State Fair was salad on a stick. <laughs> Ball one to Valbuena. Although they probably tried to deep fry it. They deep fry everything <laughs> at the Minnesota State Fair. <laughs> Off the plate, Valbuena works the count to 2 0. He has 22 homers to tie Evan Gaddis for the club lead. 46 runs batted in with a 213 batting average. Valbuena went four for 12 in New York and he was hitting the ball hard to left field there and left center. Two balls and a strike. In fact Valbuena's slash line recently is very strong. We've seen an improvement in him. And I think it's what you just said him trying to drive the ball the other way. So have some good at bats in Yankee Stadium let the ball get deep. And he takes this count to three balls and a strike. Gibson has walked 52 in 154 innings. He is a ground ball pitcher. It's three and two. Gibson's from the University of Missouri. Born in Greenfield, Tennessee.
High for ball four. There's a two out walk. Valbuena becomes the first Houston base runner. And Marwin Gonzalez will come up. Gonzalez missed her everything for the Astros was four for 14 with a homer in that Yankees series driving in three. And uh, on Wednesday he made his first start at shortstop since July 1st. Back at shortstop for the second straight game 264 nine homers 31 runs batted in. He is 0 for 6 lifetime against Gibson. Strike one to Gonzalez. Carlos Correa thinks that uh, he'll be fine. Just a little bump in the road. We had that play in New York. He was stretching for a throw from Chris Carter toward the outfield on a force play at second. Seemed to reach back behind his leg after that play. He said, no, that was not the play he heard it on. It's just been kind of bothering him a little bit for the last few days. Not a big deal. One and one. But what was a big deal was he went to the Minnesota State Fair yesterday. And did you see that photo of him? Here it is. There it is. Yeah, is there anything left at the Minnesota State Fair? No, he wiped out the midway. Well, hamstring's good enough to do that, huh? He must have knocked down every milk bottle they had there. And he said he threw some darts and did some other things to win prizes. So his little sister is going to get some great stuffed animals in just a few days. There's nothing Carlos Correa cannot do. One and two. Marwin questioning that last call, and rightfully so. Suzuki caught the game last night at Tampa Bay. Twins got to bed roughly 2.30 or 3 this morning. But he is back in the lineup because the Astros have the left-hander, Kazmir. On the mound. And the Twins backup catcher bats left. That's a strikeout to win the Astros second inning with no runs, no hits, and a man left. No score. Bottom of the second inning. Follow the Astros all season with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, stat casts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Trevor Plouffe is the batter. It's nothing, nothing. Here's ball one to Plouffe. Playing first base tonight. With a 246 average, 18 homers, 70 runs batted in. He's been primarily the third baseman this year. But Miguel Sano 
has moved into play more and more at third base as well as DHing. One ball, one strike. Joe Maurer getting a rest tonight against the lefty Casimir. Ploof was at first base last night as well. It's two balls and a strike to Ploof. Sano though is also sidelined. He has a bit of a hamstring problem. So he and Correa following similar paths unfortunately for both of them to the bench in this game tonight. That's in for a strike and it's two and two to Trevor Plouffe who's 29 years old from West Hills California. First round pick of the twins at 04. Good change up. Casimir's got that he takes a lot of his miles per hour off. Line to Gomez in center. Hard hit out number one. Gomez is taking care of three plays in this game. Eddie Rosario follows. Casimir will remember him. Rosario hit the first pitch thrown to him by Casimir for a homer. That was May 6th against Oakland. Two seventy four eight homers thirty two runs batted in for Rosario. Torrey Hunter's on deck. That's in for a strike. Rosario has quite an outfield arm. He clocks that one to first and it's caught by Valbuena. Low line drive for out number two. Rosario sees, sees the ball pretty good off of Casimir. That was laced. Blistered it. Get the hands back on that off speed pitch and just turbo hooked it right at Valbuena who let Rosario know it's in his glove. Five time All Star Torrey Hunter's next. He rolls it to third. Chad Lowry throws him out and quickly through two. There's no score. Jason Castro, big walk-off home run against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Got a rough home stand otherwise and had a rough year too, but here of late, swinging the bat pretty well. Did a great job in those couple games he played out at Yankee Stadium. So driving the ball all over the place, but it's amazing one hit can get you going and you put yourself in a good situation. Contribute to this ball club and remember it's not how you start it's how you finish and Castro right now if he can continue this is going to finish quite strong that is an excellent reminder 218 11 homers 30 runs batted in of what can happen to a team getting to the postseason there's so many guys who have had 
seasons during the regular year not to remember but in the postseason they just obliterated any memory of that regular season by doing so well in the playoffs and every guy would have a chance to do that on this team if yeah. they make it. Yep. Winning is the cure of all evil. Breaking pitch punch to left field. Shane Robinson with a catch. Jake Marisnik comes up next. Marisnik was two for five in the Yankees series. 230, six homers, 24 runs batted in for Jake. Had some excellent games on the homestand. Had a two run homer in the Dodgers series last Friday night and a double in that one and stole third as well. There's a strike to Marisnik. What happened to Jake's hair? It's gone. Got a little busy on the day off and cut the flow. Mm. Yeah, I usually had a little, a little something hanging off the back there, but yes, he did. He cleaned it up. It's a different Jake tonight. That's in for a strike. One and two. Suzuki had a critical pass ball in last night's game at Tampa Bay that really cost the Twins. Did a good job of knocking down that strike right there. Yeah, that wasn't a clean catch, was it? <laughs> or a catch of any kind for that matter. <laughs> but nonetheless, the Twins, after they turned around that road trip, they lost three at Yankee Stadium. Then they went to Baltimore and swept the Orioles. They've swept them in the season series. And that's really helped them in this wild card race. What a game baseball is. Crazy. Oh, boy. So they had won six in a row and then lost last night. What do you see with Marisny? See a foul ball. Not in one of the happier spots. Some giggling about it right now, but taking some deep breaths. That's one replay you will not see tonight. Yeah, please. Tubes on deck. Now Gibson shut out the Astros here last year, eight to nothing, seven innings, three hits, no runs, all singles, and then he beat them in Houston, three to one, seven and two thirds innings, one run. So he has had their number. Marisnik checks his swing, and it's two and two to Jake. It's like a pretty good pitch. Pitcher's pitch doesn't get the call. Riznik taps it foul. The Twins starting staff has struggled so much. ERA in the road trip for their starters 5.27. Not going deep into games. That's been a major issue. They put a load on the bullpen. And yet. They've won six of their last seven. They are right in the thick of things. Headed for September. Marisnik one hands that one out of play. It's a close one. Suzuki held it, but it's three and two now to Jake. Pretty good AB by Jake. Tenth pitch. Let's see him win it right here. Dribbles that one foul, and it is a good at bad. You're right. Stretching it out here because Gibson had been mowing down the Astros hitters without needing too many pitches for his outs.
up the middle, backhanded. Here's Dozier, one hop in the throw to Pluth. Two outs. Still a good at bat, though, for Jake. Yeah, that's too bad. You know what? That'll benefit him later on if there's guys on base. He's now pretty much seen everything that Kyle Gibson has to offer. Took Dozier to make a good play on Marizic to get him out. Good A.B. Jose Altuve is next. They've had a little ground ball to the first side of the mound. First base side of the mound. Gibson took it. One unassisted for the first out tonight. Altuve, though, has sizzled since the All-Star break. Hitting 344 with a 393 on base average. He has really helped the Astros offensively without George Springer in the lineup leading off. That one goes through into left field, and the Astros get their first base hit of the night. Altuve reaching for it, found a hole between third and short. It seems like Jose is pretty good. I mean, we see stretches where he's aggressive and he's not putting good swings on it, but when he's swinging early, does a good job of putting the barrel on it. Good idea right there, too, because you have the third baseman pulled in, hit it hard, pretty easy to get by him. Now let's see if he might be running. It's the first chance they've had Gibson in the stretch, too. Chad Lowry grounded out to short. He takes ball one. Take a look at our Super Mo. Brought to you by Mattress Firm on that swing by Altuve. It's not one you're going to teach your kids, but Jose Altuve, he's got a swing that can turn anything into a hit. Lowry hits one out of play, one and one. It's nothing, nothing in Texas, the Orioles and the Rangers. They're in the top of the third inning. Kevin Gossman is pitching against Cole Hamels. The Angels lead at Cleveland one to nothing. They're in the bottom of the sixth. The Astros lead Texas by five. And the Angels by five and a half. The throw goes over. They pick him off. And that's how the top of the third inning ends. No runs a hit, nobody left, no score. Pitching has been very good, not giving up more than two runs and eight consecutive starts. But the starters were impressive again against the New York Yankees. Coming off that series, A.J. Hinch asked about his starters and how good they have been lately. So here's our Geico quote of the day. Hinch saying, 
I don't know if it's the extra rest or the momentum, but they're trying to all outdo each other. There's a little competitiveness in there. I don't really care what the reason is. It's just they continue on to get to the next guy and put up quality start after quality start. Some of the pitchers have actually talked about this, saying they kind of feed off of each other each day. So that competitiveness is there within each other, but they really just want to help this club win. And, of course, starting pitching, keeping them afloat when the offense was struggling a little bit there, guys. Thanks, Julia. Eduardo wow. Nunez looks at it. It's a strike to even the count of one and one. Nunez, the third baseman, has two homers, 15 runs batted in, filling in for the injured Miguel Sano. It's this one high to left field. That backs up Marisnik. Marisnik at the warning track. Nunez makes it one nothing Twins. Home run number three for Nunez. There's a changeup in Kashmir. The couple that he had thrown earlier in the game, he's kind of yanking him a little bit. And I think we'll see on the replay on this one that he did yank this one, kind of threw it back into the barrel, back into the bat speed of Eduardo Nunez. See the grip and you see the location, and that's a problem. Right on right, you might be able to get away with that changeup on the inside corner with the right-handed batter against the left-handed pitcher. You have so much longer to see that baseball. One nothing twins. Kurt Suzuki is next. So Nunez got the foot down, kept those hands back, and was able to be extremely quick to that. It's two and out of Suzuki. With a 242 average, four homers, 42 runs batted in for Suzuki. He's had four multi hit games in his last six starts, at least one RBI in five of his last six starts. And it's 3 0 to Suzuki. The Twins are 38 24 here at Target Field this year. In for a strike, 3-1 to Casimir. Casimir leads all American League starters in ERA since the All-Star break. 2.17 for his last seven starts. He gets a foul tip, and it's 3-2. and two. Since he joined the Astros rotation July 24th, the Astros starting pitchers have the best ERA in the majors, 2.60. And his is 2.41. Into the crowd. It's still a three ball, two strike count on Kurt Suzuki. Shane Robinson's on deck. Here comes Marisnik in left. Marlon Gonzalez out to shallow left. Calls him off. One out. Shane Robinson is 30 from Atlanta. Comes up now and with his 16 runs batted in, 259 batting average. He's not contributed a lot of power to the Twins' cause this year. He's a good defensive player. He's a non-roster spring training invitee this year. Robinson looks at it, and it's ball one. Mike Fires and Mike Pelfrey are the starters tomorrow night, an hour earlier start time tomorrow night at 6:10. Astros pregame show coming on at 5:30. It's 2-0. And, oh. and Sunday it's Lance McCullers and Irvin Santana. Over the edge, and it's two and one to Robinson, who spent five years with the Cardinals. He's played all three outfield positions, and he actually pitched. And foul ball makes it two and two. Well, both of these managers taking over their respective clubs this year are 
certainly in the running for manager of the year honors in the American League. Paul Molitor with the Twins. A.J. Hinch with the Astros. Both clubs winning 72 games last year. Both drastically improved. Struck him out. Two strikeouts for Kasman. It's a little bit better location and some light of life on that pitch, too. We know that Kazmir pitches around 88 90, but sometimes with that two strike count, he's able to reach back and touch 93 94. Byron Buxton hit the ball to Carlos Gomez in center in the first. Buxton fouls at strike one. The last playoff berth for the Twins was in 2010. Buxton, a big building block for their future, just as Correa is for the Astros' future. Oh, and two. He had a tough night last night. 0 for 4 with four punch outs at Tampa Bay. He's just 21 years old. Second time he's done that. He's from Baxley, Georgia, a town of fewer than 5,000 people. Changeup got him. Nunez with a homer makes it 1 0 Twins through three. The force is arriving in Houston on September 6th as Minute Maid Park transforms into the world of Star Wars. Come dressed as your favorite character and watch as the Astros take on the Twins at 1.10 p.m. All fans with a Star Wars ticket will receive an Orbit One Kenobi bobblehead. For more information, visit Astros.com slash Star Wars or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. I can't believe I'm going to miss that, Brownie. Oh, you've got to come back for it. Jed Lowry, the batter. There's ball one. Maybe Julia will see Chewy again as she did last year. Yeah, she hooked me up in Seattle. Oh, did she? Yeah, that was a good time. Lowry grounded out first time up tonight. Altuve was picked off to end the top of the third inning, and he hardly budged on that throw to first by Gibson. I've seen that a lot in recent weeks. Not sure what's going on there. Yeah, it'd be nice to see that one cleaned up a little bit. I don't think that Altuve is one of those guys that needs to cheat too often to steal bags. He's got enough speed. Skies one to center field. Buxton going back. Julia. Hey, Brownie. As 
Kevin Gaddis heads up to the plate. He's been swinging it well here lately. Three home runs in the last two games. Five homers in his last 15. Uh, A.J. Hinch saying he's been laying off some tough pitches, so put him in better counts there and seeing the ball a little bit better right now. But Gaddis is feeling good right now physically. Uh, he's already played in more games this year than he had last year and in the year before as well. So much healthier year for him. Of course, the DH is helping a lot. He told me that that's been the biggest difference. Catching was really hard on his body. Uh, but now, I mean, without all of that and, and being so tired, he can really concentrate on, his, on things like his swing and more offensive driven right now. But he's feeling pretty good, guys. Yeah, he did have some injuries the last couple of years with Atlanta. Had a bulging disc in his back last year. Also kidney stones. Takes the slider there, 1-1. One, one. And then in 2013, he had a strained oblique. And that's what the Astros had counted on when they made the trade for him with Atlanta. More playing time as the DH. Foul ball takes the count to 1-2 and two on Evan Gaddis. Angels won Indians nothing. Top of the seventh inning in Cleveland. A duel between Andrew Heaney of the Angels and Trevor Bauer of the Indians. The Indians pitching staff is nasty. Roll behind third. Eduardo Nunez. High throw. Gaddis is safe. Dozier coming over to back up the play. And Gaddis reaches on the throwing error by Nunez, his third of the year. It seems that Gibson's been trying to get into the kitchen of these Astro right handed hitters. Did a good job right here. Gaddis with two strikes putting the ball in play. Sometimes you never know what's going to happen. Nunez just never finished his throw and error made it. Gaddis back to first base, and it's Colby Rasmus batting. He hit a fly ball to center. That's the 67th error of the year for the Twins. That's flared foul and out of play. Get another look at that play. Now watch the throwing arm. Kind of cuts it off a little bit instead of finishing right through the first baseman with that release point. Pretty lucky that ball stayed in the ballpark. Yes. Inside, and it's one ball, one strike to Rasmus. Buxton actually shading Rasmus to left center field. And there's quite a bit of room in the right center field alley, as you see on that shot. Two. Yeah, that got there in a hurry, didn't it? Sure did. How about Colby Rasmus let Gibson know that uh, he's got the hands to get to that inside pitch rather quickly? You bet he let him know. Baltimore got a run in the third inning, leads Texas 1 nothing. No, just might have set him up for that changeup right here. Sometimes you try and throw that fastball in, get a guy to speed up with a swing and then pull the string. Colby checked his swing, and it's two and two now. Paul Janish has resurfaced in the big leagues for the Orioles. He's playing shortstop tonight. Foul ball for Trevor Plouffe at first base. So the Twins will be in Houston next weekend. Seattle comes in Monday through Wednesday, and Thursday's an off day. It's going to be a little on the field ceremony Monday night to celebrate T. Mike Fires no hitter last week.
Asmus looks at it, and it's a full count to Colby. As you saw, that did miss. Field shifted around, and Colby has a lot of room on the left side. That's a strikeout. Number two of the night for Gibson. We can change up from Gibson right there. Again, gonna speed up the eyes and the hands on Colby Rasmus with those fastballs inside. Then you come with that change up. Tough to slow down. Carlos Gomez hit a little ball that traveled uh, five, six feet in front of the plate. And that tap. Turned out to be an out from two to three back in the second inning. Suzuki handled it. Nunez in tight at third base for Gomez. Who flares one behind first base. Trevor Plouffe over to foul ground. He lost it. And nobody got there. <laughs> the Bermuda Triangle out there. Yeah. <laughs> and you said it before. Plouffe is normally a third baseman. These are not easy plays for a first baseman to drop his head. You notice he's holding the base runner on. But he's looking for a spot to go to and when he put his head down to figure out where he was when he looked back up into the night sky he completely lost it. Dozier are nowhere to be found. Nope. Dozier had a long way to go. He's playing Gomez just to the first base side of second pretty deep. As you see there that's where he had to come from. So Gomez gets another swing. He's tied up on that one, and it's one and one. Gomez had a four RBI game at Yankee Stadium on Tuesday. Astros won that one 15 to 1. It's one and two to Gomez. The Nationals are at home, but they trail the Marlins four to three in the bottom of the seventh inning. But Max Scherzer on the mound. Ian Desmond hit his 16th. Wilson Ramos number 12. Martin Prado hit number seven, and Ozuna number seven for the Marlins. Gomez takes it. Two balls, two strikes. The Astros have 25 games remaining against the clubs in their division. They'll start whittling those down Monday night against Seattle, which now is looking for a general manager, firing Jack Zarensic. Ooh, wee, what's going on over there, huh? Line shot into left field. Gomez reaches on the two out single. Advancing Gaddis to second base. Yeah, you know, as surprising as these two teams have been, the Mariners have been surprising in the other direction this year. Yeah, there were a lot of people picking them to lead the West. The addition of Nelson Cruz and some of the high dollar guys on that payroll to back up the pitching they had, but. Last year they had one of the best bullpens in all of baseball. And this year just completely imploding. Fernando Rodney. Yeah, they just traded him. Woo. Valbuena walked first time up. Inside for ball one. Twins would love to have a strong outing from Gibson tonight, the way they have gone through their relief core lately. And their closer, Glenn Perkins, has been down for a few days, but is thought to be available to close tonight. He's had some lower back issues. Ground ball, diving play. Ploof with a throw, but in time, even though it wasn't accurate. 
Gibson was able to stop, jump, and make the play. No runs, one hit, one error, two left. One nothing Twins. Playoffs will get you caught up with exactly where these teams stand right now. It's the Astros leading the Rangers by five and the Angels by five and a half. The wild card race, the Yankees lead the Rangers by four. And the Angels and Twins are tied just a half game out of that second wild card spot. Good stuff happening for the Houston Astros. My goodness. Again, a lot of games within the division, a chance to really separate themselves this way they've got to look at it. Scott Casimir trails one to nothing on the Eduardo Nunez third inning leadoff homer. Eduardo Escobar leads it off in the fourth. He had a fly ball to center field. And the Astros in their last nine games have allowed 12 runs. And that's punch back foul strike one and winning seven of those nine excellent pitching. They lost a couple of one to nothing games. It's been playoff caliber baseball in terms of the low scores. So the pitchers and Casimir has been there have uh, been going out without a lot of run support usually and they've been forced to pitch really well which he did beating the Dodgers three to one on Saturday. Working with extra rest now. And that doesn't seem to be hampering anybody. No, that's the interesting thing for me is usually when pitchers realize that their offense is having a tough time putting up numbers, they try and go out there and do a little too much, start hanging pitches and getting hit around a little bit. But these guys have just been businesslike in how they go out there. Line to left field, headed for the corner. Maristic will have to dig it out. Extra bases for Escobar. He's in the second with a leadoff double. His 22nd of the year. And the shortstop continues to pepper the other teams with extra base hits. Escobar has been swinging the bat well in August. Coming into this game, hitting 304 in the month of August. Now, another double to add on to that. Nothing twins with Dozier batting. Dozier struck out in the first inning. Showing bunt. He takes ball one. Wonder how Paul Molitor feels having a guy with 26 home runs square around. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he usually bats second. He's hitting <laughs> third tonight, but yeah, that might not go down as well. Go ahead and give it a shot. Maybe you move him over, move him in. There's a big cut. Okay, never mind. Go back to the bun. <laughs> <laughs> one and one. 
Well, his 26 homers are the most in a single season by a Twins middle infielder, passing Roy Smalley, who hit 24 in 1979, and he's doing Twins TV tonight. Dozier hit 23 last year. Altuve standing at the bag. In the dirt. Two balls and a strike. Smalley's next door doing Twins television. With Dick Bramer. Nice crowd here on a Friday night. They'll have fireworks after the game tonight. Phillies lead the Padres 2 to 1, bottom of the seventh in Philadelphia. With Aaron Nola on the mound. Three balls and a strike. These Astros starting pitchers have not had a whole lot of room to operate. With the run support dwindling lately. But then the last 21 games, the Astros ERA has been 2.06. It's been very tough on the other team, too. Outside, and Dozier takes a walk. First and second, nobody out on the first walk by Casman. Kluf to follow. Kluf hit a line drive to center field in the second inning. He drove in 80 for the Twins last year. Has 70 runs batted in right now. Ball one down and in with Mauer, the regular first baseman for this team. Blue filling in there some as he is tonight. The question for a lot of Twins fans now becomes what of Sano? You know, because Sano's the young phenom and uh, he's a third baseman with a big time arm. Do you want a young 21 year old player DHing every day in the big leagues? That would hit him and the bases are loaded. With nobody out for Rosario. For whatever reason, Casimir has been throwing to that third base side of the plate all night long. A lot of pitches that he's been meaning to throw on the first base side have ended up on that third base side. Right here, trying to go to that inside corner, just completely yanks us and squares up Ploof right at the knee. Sure did. Right on the side of that left knee. Twins fans are up for the moment. Bases loaded, nobody out. Eddie Rosario, who ripped the line drive, caught by Valbuena at first base, up for the second time now. Torrey Hunter's on deck. In the dirt, ball one. The Twins as a team are hitting 285 with runners in scoring position, second best in the American League. Rosario fouls back to fastball. That makes it one and one. You know, getting back to Sano that you're talking about, uh, Paul Muller does have some issues because you've got Torrey Hunter, too. Can't fire him out in the outfield on a daily basis like you normally do. Try and find some time at DH for him. Then you've got Joe Maurer, like you said, playing first base. Trevor Plouffe, a lot of it comes down to matchups sometimes. Or who's swinging a hot bat right now? True. Foul back. One ball, two strikes. Well, you know it would be his preference to have Sano in the lineup. Sano's driven in 24 runs in the month of August. With eight home runs. He is a threat. And A.J. Hinch does not have Carlos Correa tonight.
Swing and a miss and a strikeout. One very big out for Scott Casimir. Watch out number four. And that's a huge strikeout because now the ground ball gets you out of this inning with a double play. That is a firm changeup. Actually, that's the slider. I apologize. You can see Casimir's hand get on the side of that and just turbo cut that down in the dirt for the swing and miss. Good job by Casher to knock that down. Torrey Hunter's the batter. Hunter's driven in more than 1,300 runs in his career. Ball one to Hunter. He grounded out to third, first time up. He is 0 for his last 28 at Target Field. Kazmir has thrown 5 of 15, first pitch strikes, very low number. Two and zero, so he's really struggling. Yeah, only leave one walk on the night for Kazmir, but he has found himself in some hitters counts. Two O's, three ones. Hunter has 349 career homers, 210 as a twin. Set around the second hit batter of the inning by Casper. Two to nothing, Twins. Tough way to get an RBI. It's his 64th of the year for Hunter. We always hear about pitchers pitching downhill, maybe in a hallway towards home plate. But for whatever reason right now, Casimir is pitching from side to side instead of back to front. A little too much rotation, I'm not sure, but he's getting his money's worth on these hit-by-pitches, though. Yeah, he has consistently, as you pointed out, come far inside the right-handed batters. Man, those are not good spots to get hit. He had hit three batters. In 147 innings coming into this game. And he's hit two in a three batter stretch. Gives you an idea how rare this is. Eduardo Nunez homered in the third inning. Now this crowd is up for him to do some damage with the bases loaded and one out as he comes up in the fourth. A 361 career hitter against Houston coming into this game. And ball one is that one is wide in the other direction. Casmir seven and five lifetime against the Twins with a 3.56 ERA. Foul away. One and one. The Twins are seeing a lot of fastballs. It's because of that number you mentioned earlier that five out of 16 hitters now with first pitch strikes. If you fall behind, you've got to throw something you know you can throw for a strike, and usually it's that fastball. And like most pitchers, he throws the fastball more often when he's behind in the count, 65% of the time, compared to 56% overall. Two, they Fardo is left, has the play at first, and gets him as a run scores. Three to nothing, Twins, but it took a good effort for Altuve to get one out. Nunez gets his second RBI, 17th of the year, and there are runners at second and third now. It's a good play, but if the Astros actually come back and overtake the Minnesota Twins in this game, you'll look back and say that was a great play. Because Nunez was trying to shoot that ball the other way, trying to sneak one through for a couple RBIs, but Altuve shows a good range and the ability to throw back across his body for a big out. Yeah, he was a double play depth, and he had to take several steps and then reach toward the outfield to make that play. Kurt Suzuki popped a short in the third inning. 
Robinson's on deck. To right field, Rasmus still retreating to the warning track for round number three. Two run score on one hit with two men stranded. The Twins have taken a three nothing fourth inning lead. Play Name That Astro. It's brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Here are your clues today. Tweet us your best guess. This was this Astro was a tourist, a driller, and a Toro. He once punched his own teammate during a brawl. He was given a cool nickname by Nolan Ryan. You guys know who this is? Well, what's he doing punching his own teammate? <laughs> is he colorblind? <laughs> Somebody in the other team must have docked or something. Yeah. <laughs> Not sure about that. We had team meeting after that. I'm going to say, oh, we're not supposed to answer this, are we? No, we have to. We have to wait. We have to build some drama. All right, I'll, I'll whisper his initials to you, Blummer. I look forward to it. Here, writing them down. There they are. Oh yeah. Okay. Love that guy. A little tap by Marwin Gonzalez to third base and the throw to first by. Eduardo Nunez takes care of out number one for Kyle Gibson. Here in the fifth inning with a score of three to nothing, Minnesota. Nunez is having a night. We could play. Yeah, the Twins can plug him in at different positions. And he is having a night. A homer, two runs batted in. That nice play. Jason Castro's the batter. So Gibson staked with the lead now. Shooting for his first win in a while. In his last seven starts, 0-3 with a 7.22 ERA. Trying to square his record, trying to give this bullpen some rest. Castro hit a fly ball to left. Here's ball one. Blue Jays lead Detroit five to three at the end of eight. Josh Donaldson hit a long home run. His 35th. Two balls, no strikes. Jose Bautista belted number 31, and Troy Tulowitzki hit his fourth. For the Tigers, Ian Kinsler hit his ninth. Anthony Ghost number four. R.A. Dickey left with the lead. Three and zero oh now to Castro. All right, Toronto club really taking it to the bank now after those trades for Tulowitzki and David Price. Three balls and a strike. Yeah, it's kind of scary what that offense can do. Then add David Price to that rotation. Grounded foul. Three balls, two strikes. I can't remember 
Well, they've, they've made such a great move since they made the trades for those two guys. That's happened before. But to acquire two players of that stature, position player and a pitcher, can you remember a team doing that? No. It's rocked into right center field. There's room. Castro will turn and go for second base. Ball picked up by Buxton. He's limping as he goes in with a double, but he is hurting. That is not good. Nate Lucero on the way out. Wow, he does not look good at all. That was about two thirds of the way to second base. Did you see him up with a limp. He just said it popped. Oh, I'm not boy. sure what that means or where it is, but that is not a good thing because he's been swinging the bat well. He's doing a good job behind the play, working with these pitchers too. As we get a chance to look at it, looks good out of the box, makes the turn. Wow. That's right hip. Maybe up around the hip flexor area. Oh man, that's disappointing. Castro having a great year behind the plate, working with these pitchers, throwing out base runners. That's a very tough development. Castro limps off the field. And Hank Conger will be going in. Conger goes into pinch run for him. It is a cool night here. September call ups, of course, can arrive on the first. And AJ Hinch have been talking about getting a third catcher on the roster, but now it might be happening as soon as tomorrow. A second catcher. That is not a good development at all. The Astros get hit number three, and Jake Marisnik is the batter. Marisnik grounded out in the second inning. He worked the count full, hit the ball hard up the middle. Dozier made a good play on him. An excellent at bat overall, but 0 for 1 for the night. And breaking pitch is strike one. That's a tough one for Castro, the way he'd been swinging the bat the last few days, as you pointed out. In fact, in his last uh, 54 at bats, 318 batting average, uh, the last seven games. And he had a 541 slugging percentage the last seven games for Castro. And now has to be pulled out of this game. No balls, two strikes. It's one and two to Marisnik. Max Stassi is the other catcher on the 40 man Astros roster. So he. Would have been in line, many thought, to be promoted September 1st from Triple A Fresno to become the third catcher on the roster. The normal move many clubs in contention make early in September. Marisnik strikes out two outs. That's a third punch out for Gibson. Yeah, that clock, depending on how Castro responds, might be sped up a little bit for Max Stassi. Altuve singled in the third inning for the first Houston hit with two outs in the third. He's one for two tonight. Jed Lowry on deck. Altuve grounds it foul. He's had 10 multi hit games in his last 19, hitting 390 over that stretch. And now third in the league in hits. If you're wondering about the batting race, we've been talking about Miguel Cabrera of Detroit. If he gets five plate appearances tonight, he will now qualify to be listed among the league leaders, and he'll be the league leader by far. He's up around 370 now. 0 oh and 2 to Altuve.
Texas now leads Baltimore two to one there in the bottom of the fifth in Arlington Texas. Nicole Hamels on the mound. It's one and two. We've seen some Astros fans here tonight. We know that Marty Cunningham has come in from Arizona, longtime Astros fan, along with her friends Linda and Cheryl. They make a road trip every year with the Astros. Altuve takes it. Two and two to Jose. Camera angles messing with me, Brownie. Yeah, I think everything's a strike. <laughs> <laughs> like these guys have an unbelievable eye right now. Little tap past the mound and a bobble. No, Escobar couldn't come up with it. Altuve reaching and Conger going to third base. A hit for Altuve. That's number four for the Astros and his second of the night. It's amazing how quick he is in the first two steps. This Jose Altuve. He knew immediately this was going to be a hit. Look at that head down. Good opportunity right here with two outs. Jed Lowry can really put another grimace on Kyle Gibson right here. Lowry is grounded out and hit a fly ball to center field. And strike one to Jed. Lowry is in the throes of an 0 for 21 right now. Shinsu Chu hit a 16th homer for the Rangers tonight. Inside to Lowry. Chris Jimenez hit his fourth home run for Texas in support of his battery mate Cole Hamels. Evan Gaddis is on deck. And the throw goes over on Altuve. Altuve leads the league with 33 stolen bases. He's been caught 11 times. When a base runner is picked off, it doesn't count as a caught stealing. Separate category. To left field, Shane Robinson. In the fifth for Houston, no runs, two hits, two men left, three to nothing, Twins.
fifth inning. Astros baseball offers incredible savings such as the all-you-can-eat seats at Minute Maid Park. Available every game. This great deal scores you a ticket and unlimited ballpark favorites starting at only $35. For more information, visit Astros.com slash value or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Hank Conger does the catching now after pinch running for the injured Jason Castro at second base. So a change of battery mates in the midst of the game for Scott Casimir who trails three to nothing and faces Shane Robinson who struck out first time. That's strike one. Robinson went to Jesuit High School in Tampa which produced Lou Pinella, Brad Radke, Jason Michaels and Dave Magadan. Jammed on that one. He fouls it back. No balls, two strikes. Full moon tonight. That explains it. It certainly does. Robinson lines one into right center field. Kobe Rasmus over to make the pickup. And a leadoff single on the 0 2 pitch to Robinson. Let's see what we have on name that Astro Blummer. Tony Sabio. Randy Johnson. Danny Darwin. Danny Darwin, Dr. Death. Ooh. Very good. Is that for punching your teammate? <laughs> Glenn Davis. Now Buxton's the batter. He is fly to center and struck out. Buxton shows bunt. He takes ball one. It was a very interesting draft decision. Draft day in 2012. Who was the number one pick? It was Correa, but Buxton second. That will be fun to track them throughout their major league careers. There's a lot, of, a lot of skepticism on that pick. But if you had to tally up the votes right now, I think they'd be voting for Carlos Correa. That's butted and caught. Oh, Carter it. with a double play throw. A 2 3 double play. That ball wasn't in the air very long, and Conger caught it with a bare hand and then doubled off Shane Robinson. What a play! Fresh off the bench, run the bases a little bit, get tested like this. This is not a play that happens all that often. He almost took that off the back of Buxton, made a good throw to first, get that double play. Beautiful. Very slick by Hank Conger. It's almost how fast that play looked like it unfolded, too. Now there's a foul ball by Eduardo Escobar who doubled and scored in the fourth inning. Nicely done by Conger. He was thrust right into this game in the fifth inning as a pinch runner. Now behind the dish the count goes to one and one as he goes to work for Casimir. I think we get a chance to see Evan Gaddis catch again. No. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Well, he hasn't caught at all, not even in spring training. Didn't even catch bullpens. <laughs> we'll have to check and see if he's warm enough pitchers in between innings. <laughs> Two balls, two strikes. I think they've found his niche. <laughs> yeah. Just go out there, drive and run. That's all we want you to do. That's working well. And he admits he, he really prefers DH. What do you think about all the mental side of catching and how that affects a player's offense? Yeah, there's a lot going on behind the home plate. Not just the wear and tear on your body, too. Yeah, too, yeah. That's what all, I mean, working with Ash. He just pops up out of his chair, walks around. I'm like, shouldn't your knees be in worse shape? Because I just assumed every catcher's got awful knees, but you bet. He's in pretty good shape. 
Works hard at it. Still three and two, but you know, you, you've shaken hands with catchers who are 55, 60 years old, right? Yeah. After all the broken fingers. Yeah, you know, he's trying to figure out, you know, which how to get in there for the handshake, which yeah. way some of those fingers are bent. And then you're probably going to be attached for the next five minutes. Yeah. Ray Fossey. Yep. That'll be the firmest handshake of all. <laughs> he is. going to be some kind of a ride for these two clubs now going through the next six weeks. See if they can find a way to make the playoffs. Certainly the Astros in a very good spot with a five game lead over Texas coming into play tonight. The Twins are right in the mix. They're three games over at 65 62 but these players are going to be learning a lot about themselves in the next few weeks. I think what makes it exciting for both these cities in Houston and Minnesota is that these guys are young. They're competing at a young age. It could be something that happens for the next three or four years, if not more. And, they, and that's another thing. I mean, even if they say Minnesota doesn't make it, they've got a taste of it. They have they have a feeling that they can do it. Good point. And that's what makes ball clubs get a little bit hungry is going back for another bite each year, working that much harder. And when these guys play together a little bit longer, they're going to play better together. It would just be incredible to see an Astros ball club with their rotation healthy for a full year like they have now. And then George Springer. Carlos Correa on the same lineup healthy for the whole season. That would be fantastic. Double play by Hank Conger and a scoreless fifth. Strikeout number five by Casimir ending it. 3 0 Minnesota. Presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by HEB. No store does more than my HEB. Three to nothing. The Twins lead it here after five. That beautiful target field in Minneapolis. Four hits for the Astros. Three for the Twins. Julia Morales, Texas born in 70 degree temperatures. Freezing. Wow, she's got authentic Houston Astros gear. She does. Wow. Ball one to Evan Gaddis. We caught her. Ball one, and uh, he is 0 for 2 in this game as he tries to get something going in the sixth inning to be followed by Rasmus and Gomez. Well, it does feel chilly if you've been living in Texas all summer. Now, two balls, no strikes for Gibson. So she has a right <laughs> to have on her hoodie. She stole that from a poor baseball player. She no, did. They saw I was shivering and they felt bad for me. 
That's how that went down. Yeah. Well, well, well played, Julia. <laughs> They've seen that before. I have three yeah. layers on underneath. That's the sad part. <laughs> Still chilly. It's the wind. There's no yeah, wind. It's well, a wonderful night. <laughs> it really is nice. Well, yesterday was as comfortable as it gets out walking around. Gaddis takes, and it's three and one. No problem there. Yeah, these kids. No hoodie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. That's ball four, leadoff walk. When we come up here in December, Julia, people are walking around with shorts on when it's 20 degrees. So that's the opposite end of the Texas spectrum. Are you kidding me? No, they do. It's. A little unusual, but Indian summer at 20 degrees or what? You'd see some of that. Two walks now for Gibson, and Rasmus comes up. Both times he's had full counts. He's flying to center and struck out. So the pitch count has run high for Gibson at 95 already. And there's strike one. Boy, is that a high pitch count? Five innings plus. Hey, you wouldn't tell by the scoreboard, only. Four hits for the Houston Astros. Sixty pitches for strikes, and that has been why Mr. Gibson has not gone deeper into this game. Yeah, only three punch outs. But a lot of foul balls in this game, too. No balls, two strikes. The twin starters as a group, 43 and 42 with a 4.22 ERA. In the first half of the season, they had a 3.82 ERA, and they are warming up one of their four bullpen lefties right now, Brian Dunsing. So they've gone from a 3.82 first half ERA to a 5.36 since the All Star break with their starters, and the bullpen has been under a heavy workload. They have four lefties and four righties. Yeah, that's a scary thing as a manager going down the stretch trying to figure out how you're going to manipulate that bullpen and get these guys in good situations because you have to give these guys days off. Kevin Jepson has Jepson has saved them recently. He's had three saves. Glenn Perkins has been down, but he should be back tonight. We're told. Off the plate and it's one and two. Phil Hughes is on the disabled list. The Twins are hopeful of getting him back. There's the lefty closer Perkins. He must be freezing like Julia. Yeah, Julia, you shouldn't feel so bad at all. The closer is out there wearing a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> on the infield and the third sacker, Nunez handles out number one. Everyone in the Astros dugout is wearing. <laughs> okay. Not just me. Well, that poor Gammer guy in front of you is gutting it out with his short sleeves. <laughs> it's kind of a chilly night here. It is for us. It's hard for your body to adjust. What weren't we just feeling 102 or yeah. something in Houston? <laughs> That's a good point. Good you're going to complain about 80 degrees tomorrow. Too hot. No, not at all. <laughs> Tough. All right, you can tub it out. Carlos Gomez, the batter, he's one for two. He singled to left last time up. But Paul Molitor trying to get a little bit more out of his starter. And Gibson throws strike one. Yeah, he'd love to get Gibson through this inning right here. Not only for his bullpen, but also for Gibson to qualify for that quality start. Gibson hasn't gotten an out in the seventh inning since the first of August when he went seven. Gomez falls down on that foul ball. This guy is a walking yard sale. He's you take a swing and there's going to be stuff everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. I don't even know how to explain that. <laughs> Houston Methodist helps us get to know Carlos Gomez. Town, Santiago, Dominican Republic. Hit for the cycle in 08 with the Twins.
He flicks that one foul, stays alive, and no balls, two strikes. We're told his cycle was a reverse cycle, which would mean homer, triple, double, single. One of only four in history in the reverse fashion. One and two. It only makes sense that Carlos Gomez <laughs> did that on the reverse, right? <laughs> well, can you imagine what Jimmy Pearsall did when he hit his 100th homer? When he ran around the bases, he ran backwards. No way. Yeah, he did. Did he get yelled at for that? Now, what would Joe Girardi do about that today? He would have flipped his lid. Disrespect the game like that. Have fun. Struck him out. Number four. And Valbuena comes up. Valbuena has walked and he's grounded out. Trevor Plouffe with a diving play to get him with two men on base in the fourth inning. And if the Twins win that, they'll point to that play as very helpful along the way. Okay. Mike Boyer has really worked a lot in relief lately for the Twins. And it's ball one. You know, Paul Molitor, though, did not blame the uh, ground rules there at the Trop. They lost a home run last night. Miguel Sano crushed the ball, hit that B ring, and it was ruled a double. And uh, he did not blame it on the ground rules at all. Both these managers are not excuse prone whatsoever. 2 0. AJ was asked if he had had a chance to talk with Paul Molitor. He said, well, not yet. We've communicated, but we haven't talked. But I want to, but I don't want to compare resumes with him. <laughs> There's a lot of us that don't want to compare resumes with him. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Molitor met with the media tonight in his office, and, and we went down for that. And he was asked a lot of questions about the upcoming month of September and the wild card race. Different players and uh, very matter of fact, very businesslike. And led extremely well, as you would imagine. Having dealt with the media in a Hall of Fame career his whole life, three balls and a strike. And he was asked about uh, not being able to play Sano tonight. He, he said, well, he has a leg issue. It's a hamstring. And we just don't want to lose him for an extended period of time. Were it later in the season, we might try to do that. But not with this much time left. 3 2 to Valbuena now. <laughs> 110 pitches, as you see, for Gibson. He threw 114 July 2nd, 117 in a game back in June. 117s is high this year. And it's down an in ball four. So Valbuena takes the second walk from Gibson this inning, third of the game, and that brings up Marwin Gonzalez. Paul Molitor is headed for the mound, and he's already made a move to the left hander. That'll turn around Marwin Gonzalez. Unable to go six. Gibson will leave after five and two thirds with a three nothing lead back in a moment.
lefty Brian Dunsing warming up. And uh, they're, they're layering up for this game. So Julian need not feel bad at all about this. I don't feel bad. I'm yeah. trying to stay warm down here. Well, I'm just embarrassed by everyone that's wearing the tank tops around me. We're getting a... Uh, <laughs> I heard that uh, the equipment manager is going to charge her for that sweatshirt. Yeah. She's going to have to Twitter pay up. Saying. On Twitter, though, they, they like it. They want to know where they can get one. They, they want you to get a hot chocolate and a yeah. parka. They, I'm sure they sell hot chocolate here. Oh, sure Not they in do. August. You don't think so? Not in August. Come on. <laughs> they also sell fried walleye on a stick. <laughs> Time now for our AT&T call to the bullpen, bringing in the lefty, Brian Dunsing. A look at the lefty making his 47th appearance. He's going to come at you with fastball around 91, 92 miles an hour, slider, curveball, and a changeup. A save under his belt this season, also. 32 year old veteran from Marysville, Kansas, facing Marwin Gonzalez, who's hitting 293 right handed. And he hits the corner for strike one. Marwin has struck out and grounded out. Dunsing in his last 23 outings has an ERA of 1.80. He has been a starter back in 2011. He made 28 starts for the Twins, working 161 innings that year. Off the plate, and it's one and one. His Twins bullpen with 22 wins, 20 losses, and a 4.12 ERA coming into play here with two men on. Kyle Gibson in five and two thirds innings has given up four hits so far no no runs he's walked three and has struck out four and the two runners on base are his responsibility right now. Dunsing you mentioned that save it was his second of his career that was way back on April 10th against the White Sox he had another one back in 2013. He's fourth on the Twins all time appearance list by a left hander with 345 in relief. Eddie Gordado, the all time leader. One hopper to Dozier to win the Astros sixth. No runs, no hits, two men left, three to nothing, Twins. with Root Sports and we will thank one lucky fan by giving them a better view of the game with a new 40 inch HD television. Follow us on Twitter at Root Sports SW now through August 31st and look for your chance to win. Visit RootSports.com for official rules. You guys are pretty social up there. And warm. That guy's cold. 
has a t-shirt but he has his arms folded. Oh yeah. Start to sink in. Bottom of the sixth inning three nothing twins Brian Dozier. Has struck out and walked and scored a run. Got Casimir with a breaking pitch falls behind one and oh. Astros one two of three against the twins the last time they were here. And that was June of 2014. Tap foul into one ball, one strike count to Dozier. Dozier was drafted by the Twins in 09, eighth round. On the change, it goes to one and two. Dozier was born in Tupelo, Mississippi, went to the University of Southern Mississippi. Despite the Twins fans' best efforts to vote him in, they didn't vote him in, but he was named to the All Star team. In the air, and here's Valbuena, the only infielder on the right side, handling that one, one out. Trevor Plouffe follows. Twins, of course, for many years have been very big on homegrown players, developing them in the minor leagues, teaching them how to play the game, and then bringing them up and hanging on to them. Blue flying to center field, and he was hit by a pitch. Longtime skipper Tom Kelly was very good at teaching the game to Twins players. They were always competitive and played hard. In for a strike and it's 0 and 2. Rosario on deck. And yet it's a small market, so the Twins at times have not been able to match payrolls with other clubs around baseball. But almost all the time they have not been able to match. One and two. But they have developed some fantastic players. Saw Tony Oliva around the batting cage. He won several batting titles, seven, I believe. And for a strike, and that is strike number three. Poof, didn't think so. It was. Good pitch by Casimir. Ben May called it at strikeout number six for Casimir. Rosario next. He lined to first and he struck out. Astros infielders in a shift playing him to pull. That's in for strike one. Rodney Linares has been named the uh, Texas League Manager of the Year for Double A Corpus Christi. Congratulations to Rodney Linares. Nice work. Not done yet. No, they're not. Not at all. Headed into the playoffs soon. One ball, one strike. He has uh, been named manager of the year earlier in his career, Class A. AJ Reed is hitting 342 this season in the minors. 29 homers, 109 runs batted in. I want to say I saw somewhere he hit another bomb tonight. Okay. Just keep racking him up. One and two. Glenn Perkins is up in the bullpen. Paul Molitor was asked if he would be the closer tonight, and he kind of hedged on that. So he made it pretty clear with his answer that Perkins might be used earlier in the game, and apparently that is going to happen. Any reasoning behind it, or I think just the fact that he's been out for a few days, he's had a back issue, and uh, would rather ease him back into that spot. It sounded like, but he didn't actually say that. Fielded by Marwin Gonzalez. It's a one, two, three, six for Casimir. 
He keeps the score three to nothing twins through six. It is time to name that Astro. It's brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Here are your clues. Get some good tweets on this one right away. Let's see who it is. It's Danny Darwin. He played for the Asheville Tourists, the Tulsa Drillers, and the Tucson Toros in his minor league career. Oral Hershiser claimed that Danny punched him in the face during a giant Phillies brawl while they were teammates. And he was given the name Dr. Death by Nolan Ryan. Dr. Death? Yeah. That was it. That's intimidating. Yeah, well, he was an intimidating guy. Now here is the closer, Glenn Perkins. In 50 games, he's 2-4 and four with a 2.61 ERA. Coming back from a back problem, he's used now not in a closing role. And throws ball one inside. And it's Hank Conger leading it off. Conger entered the game for an injured Jason Castro. We've been uh, hearing on Twitter, people want an update. We don't have one for you. And there's a the strike. But it was obviously it looked like an upper right leg problem with Jason Castro. We just do not have any further information than that right now. I think we just got word that it is a right quad strain. Okay. One two to Conger. So Conger went in as a pinch runner for Castro. He's hitting 143 right handed. Two balls, two strikes. As Perkins comes in, he leads the American League with 31 saves. He's one of three to have 31. Has not had a save in 12 days. He strikes out Conger. One out in the seventh inning. Uh, Perkins on the road trip was one and one with a 6.75 ERA. That's why his back hurt. <laughs> Carrying that around. Marisnik is 0 for 2. Perkins is 32. Popped up. Plouffe gives way and Dozier has it. Two down. Perkins is from St. Paul. And as you remember last year, an all-star who got the save right here in his home ballpark. <laughs> two outs, it's Jose Altuve batting. Altuve has two hits and three at bats. Perkins last year gave up a grand slam to John Singleton of the Astros. But the runs were Unearned. Altuve takes a strike. Moves back from that one, and it's one and one. 
Had a blown save against Houston in 2013 on a three run homer by Brandon Barnes. Altuve fouls it back one and two. I mentioned Kevin Jepson has been doing the closing the last few days for the Twins. Evidently that's the plan again for tonight. Good to have options. Still a ball and two strikes to Altuve. The big thing for Perkins is that velocity. It'll give you a good indication on how he's feeling. Breaking pitch comes down and in. We did get that update you talked about on the home run by A.J. Reed from Astros Future. He hit his eighth at double A tonight. 31st home run overall in the minors this year. A.J. Reed. Altuve swings and misses, and that's a one, two, three, seven for Perkins. Three to nothing, Twins. Corner is a dedicated section for fans to show their support for the Astros ace every time he takes them out. You get a ticket, beard, and a Kuiper's Corner Go Beard or Go Home t-shirt for Monday's game versus the Mariners. For more information, visit astros.com slash Kuiper's Corner or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. Browning. And King Felix is pitching that night for Seattle. It's an added bonus. Thanks, Julia. Hope to see you there Monday night, Astros and Mariners. Scott Casimir on the mound now, bottom of the seventh inning, three nothing Twins. Torrey Hunter the batter. He was hit by a pitch, which forced in a run in the fourth inning. He's 0 for one. Off the plate, ball one. Casimir allowed hits in the third, fourth, and fifth. Just one hit in each inning, but he had some wildness along the way. 2 0. He had two hit batters and a three batter span in the fourth, and there was a walk involved there, too. And yet, he pitches into the seventh inning, having allowed three runs. Two balls and a strike. Shooting for win number 99 of his career. In for a strike. Hunter was headed for first, but it's two and two to Torrey. Right there under the mask. Back to Casimir. And a high throw. Valbuena gets back. Casimir, who's had some fielding problems this season. Has made five errors. Jack in the box is going to take us inside the box score. Lowest ERA amongst 
American League pitchers since August 5th in the major leagues. I apologize. How about that? That makes that even better. One, Fires. two, three, four. Yep. Houston Astros. Those are some unbelievable numbers right there. That just goes to show you how these Astros are staying in these games. Talk about competition. Nunez hits one and Marisnik chases it down the left field line, but it's foul. Nunez with a homer and a ground out, which drove in a run. Has two of the twins, three runs batted in. Yeah, it's it's really been everybody in concert in this pitching staff. It's impressive to watch. Blinded foul. Only two to Nunez. Chad Qualls is working for Houston. You know, another word on Rodney Linares, the Texas League Manager of the Year for Corpus Christi. Four guys have left the Corpus Christi hooks during this season, and they've been promoted. Carlos Correa, Lance McCullers, Vince Velasquez, and Mark Appel, and he's still Manager of the Year. Marwin Gonzalez. Two outs. I guess that pretty much explains it, huh? <laughs> Keep plucking big leaguers off his roster. He yeah. still goes out there and wins. It's pretty nice. I think it's an even bigger credit to Rodney that he's got guys up here in the show that are producing and helping a major league team go for a pennant. Gives you an idea of what kind of manager and person he is, teaching these guys not only how to play, but how to win. True. Kurt Suzuki is the batter. And Michael Feliz was up briefly as well, and then went back. Suzuki with ball one has hit the ball in the air twice. The Astros have Lowry Gaddis and Rasmus do up in the eighth inning. Four hits for Houston three for Minnesota in a strange game. That's a deep drive to left field. It's got home run distance near the foul pole and that ball is foul. Whoa. He's not looking much room to hit that ball foul, Brownie. No. Suzuki hit a blast, and it just kept hooking. One and one. Did that one fit right in there in that tiny space? Let's see. We are going to have to check it out. Going towards that brick wall. It did. <laughs> <laughs> wow, stay hot, Suzuki. Now the umpires are conferring. They may do a review. Oh, this would be a great angle. See it in front of the foul pole. Hmm. Tell you what, Kurt Suzuki better go buy a lottery ticket. There's not too many. Times you're going to do that in your career. No, sir. Try to fit one into that tiny space. Between that wall and foul territory and the foul pole, it's only maybe what, a foot, foot and a half, and he fitted right in there. They're reviewing it. If they got that angle we saw. This should be relatively quick. There we go. I like it, boys. Make the call. Foul ball. Bill Miller, the crew chief, was the man you saw there. I think the if if your play gets reviewed and you get it right, you should be able to take the headset off and just drop it. <laughs> be like, yep, I got it. Boy, that missed by a whisker. Pretty incredible. And the counts one and one on Suzuki. Two balls and a strike. Now we were told by Dick Bramer, who does Twins TV, that ball Sano hit last night when it hit that catwalk at Tampa Bay it was still going up. And yet it was ruled a double. That's the ground rule there. There's nothing the umpires could do about it. Shot to center field. Gomez with the catch. And that now is eight in a row retired. 
by Kasmir, who keeps it at three to nothing. Twins through seven. Inning. And this is the Astros' upcoming schedule presented by Progressive. First game of a three game set over the weekend here in Minnesota before Houston hops on the plane, heads directly south, and takes on the Seattle Mariners for the end of August, beginning of September, for that day off and face these same, these same twins over the weekend in Houston before heading out west. Take on the American League West, try and create some space, put away the Oakland A's. Then into Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Let's see if they can ruin their rest of the season. Good times ahead within the division for the Houston Astros. Pitcher number four is coming in now for the Twins. Trevor May, the right-hander, he's been a starter and reliever. He's eight and eight with a 3.96 ERA, three holds in 102 and a third innings. Striking out 94 with a whip of 1.34. Then Perkins had a one two three seventh with two strikeouts. Brian Dunson got an out in the sixth inning. So far the bullpen holding firm for Paul Molitor. Twenty five year old Trevor Mays from Longview Washington. Facing Jed Lowry. Fastball is good for strike one. At ninety five. Lowry's 0 for three. Jed now is 0 for his last 22. That one comes in and it's a one ball, one strike count. Lowry, of course, missing weeks with that thumb surgery, trying to get his stroke back together again. Breaking pitch takes it to one and two for Trevor May, who was drafted by the Phillies, traded to the Twins. Last year was his first in the big leagues. He spent part of it at Triple-A Rochester last year. In the dirt and it's two and two as Lowry tries to get aboard with Gaddis and Rasmus due up next here in the Astros eighth. They've been held to four hits. One for extra bases. Last ball is strike three call. Seven for Twins pitching. Just locked him up. Fastball on the inside. I'm always talking about how with two strikes, you're taught to protect that outside corner, adjust everything else. But when you get painted on like that, you just got to take it and go back. Hope for another AB. Evan Gaddis is 0 for 2 with a walk. That's strike one. R.A. Dickey in Toronto beat Detroit and Matt Boyd. Dickey going to 9 and 10 with the 5 to 3 win. 28,636 the paid attendance here. Up and in. There's some life on that pitch at 94. 
One and one. Roberto Osuna got his 16th save for the winning Blue Jays tonight. One ball, two strikes. They brought a game and a half lead on the Yankees into play tonight. Texas leads four to one over Baltimore, top of the ninth at Texas. Cleveland down the Angels, three to one in Cleveland. Gaddis drills one foul. Way to go, Indians. The Blue Jays now have won eight of their last ten. In August, they're 19 and five. <laughs> Rolled out to shortstop, charged, and Escobar will throw. They're out number two. Blue Jays are averaging six runs per game this month. That's just unfair. It's their highest scoring month in the last 10 years. I think the Yankees were happy to get the Astros out of town. Oh, boy. They scored 13 tonight. Colby Rasmus is 0 for 3. 13 to 3, the Yankees beating Atlanta in Atlanta. Strike to Rasmus. Beautiful ballpark, target field. Kind of wedged into the downtown area. There wasn't a whole lot of real estate here to build this ballpark, but it fits very nicely. Yeah, they did a good job. Basketball arena right next door. You know they've, they've really put together a very nice concept of mass transit. The trains come in here to the ballpark. Foul back one and two. Minneapolis the headquarters of Target. Oh that explains it. <laughs> now well, we get some know. Twitter feedback on that. <laughs> oh, ball at stays one and two. Well, Astros personnel fanned out all over the city yesterday with a day off. That ended 13 straight games. It's another day off coming up after the three-game series at home next Thursday. The Seattle. Rasmus strikes out. The Astros haven't had a hit since the fifth. Three to nothing, Twins. Nineteen ninety-eight, Randy Johnson strikes out sixteen Pittsburgh Pirates in a two-to-nothing shutout of the Buccos. The virtuoso performance caps off an amazing first month with the Astros and pushes their NL Central lead over the Cubs to seven games. Man, that 
doesn't look like fun. He was just painting with a 95 mile per hour fastball that year. Inside corner, outside corner, moving the ball around. Just a dominant display. No, he was lights out in that Astros uniform. Grief is about three feet taller than VA. <laughs> Chad Qualls in 47 games is one at four. His ERA 3.76 coming in here after Scott Casimir worked the first seven. 37 strikeouts in 40 and two thirds innings for Qualls. A whip of 0 0.98. Three to nothing twins. Shane Robinson leads it off in the home eighth inning. He's one for two. And that strike one on the outside edge. Casimir in seven innings allowed three hits, three runs, walking one, hitting two, and striking out six. One ball, one strike. Rangers four, Orioles one. That's the final from Texas. Cole Hamill's going to two and one with the Rangers, beating Kevin Gossman. He's two and six. Hamill's in eight innings, allowed two hits, one run, walking four, fanning ten. It's two and one. So the Astros will need a big ninth inning. Otherwise, Texas is moving within four games of them. Gomez Valbuena Gonzalez two up in the ninth. Altuve to his right. One out. It's nine straight retired by Astros pitching. That's what the big unit did in August of 98. A 1.17 ERA. 61 strikeouts and a whip of 0.91. Three complete games and six strikes. Ten punch outs per game. Please tell me you want pitcher of the month. Pretty sure he did. I'll tell you what, they traded away a whole lot to get him in return, but uh, if it wasn't for Kevin Brown, it would have paid off extra special. Strike to Byron Buxton. Just remembering that uh, the Cardinals came in with Mark McGuire, and uh, those two had gone back years. Uh, there was a press conference, not involving both of them at the same time, but they were both asked about each other, of course. Fly ball out to right field. Rasmus with the play, two outs, and just thinking about the home run race that year in '98. Yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah, and. and then given that steroid era of baseball, what Johnson did with those numbers puts a little bit different spin on it. It does. It puts a lot of different spins on some of the guys that pitched through that era. For me, it's the Greg Maddox's, Tom Glavins, guys that weren't flamethrowers like Randy Johnson who could just go out there and blow the doors off people. They had to be a little more creative with their location, try and make that ball move a little bit differently, and still put up the numbers against those guys that were rather large. They were large human beings. There's ball one to Escobar. Escobar with a double and three trips. One for three. Dozier's on deck. And feels shifted around. Inside for ball two. Now these six games here between the Astros and Twins will go a long way toward deciding what each of them do regarding the playoffs this year. Miami wanted Washington 4 3. It's three balls, no strikes. Those Miami fans are not going to be pleased. The Mets are losing, though. In the top of the 10th, it's Boston 6, the Mets 3 in New York. Escobar is wheeling on it. And it's 3 1. I'm sure Escobar saw that one. <laughs> now the Mets have a six and a half game lead on Washington coming into play tonight. Ball four. Two out of ball. 
Register now for the opportunity to purchase tickets to potential 2015 Astros postseason games at Minute Maid Park. You won't want to miss the excitement of October baseball. Sign up at Astros.com slash postseason tickets. Dozier is ready to hit now. He's 0 for 2 with a walk, scored a run. Infield playing him to pull. He takes and there's strike one to Dozier. Trevor Bauer and the Indians knocked off the Angels 3 1. Bauer going to 10 and 10. And Trevor got his 2 and 2. Chad Allen got his 27 save. The Angels were held to five hits tonight. Ball and a strike. Twins began the night tied with the Angels, a half game behind Texas for the second wild card spot. The Angels now just two games above 500. Two and one for Qualls. Ploof is on deck. Grounded foul. Two balls, two strikes. Astros come back home after the Sunday afternoon finale of this road trip. Their record on the road is 26 and 36. Astros fans there. Going on 2 2, swing and a miss. He struck him out to end the eighth inning. We move to the ninth with the Twins up 3 to nothing. Root Sports is presented by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Jack in the Box. For a limited time, try the new Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack with melted garlic herb butter. Three to nothing twins. We go to the ninth inning and Paul Molitor has pieced it together with his bullpen. Starter Gibson went five and two thirds, giving up four hits, no runs. The Astros have been held to those four hits, so the bullpen has taken over with two outs and two on in the sixth inning and run right through the Astros with seven straight outs. Now here's Kevin Jepson on our AT&T call to the bullpen. He's two and six. Eight saves in 12 opportunities. He's done a good job in his last 13 appearances. He has two holds three saves only allowed five hits at 42 and batters faced to buck 19 average against two walks 10 punch outs been throwing the ball quite well. Fastball around 94 95 miles an hour. Got a curveball and a changeup to go along with it. 
Well, he certainly handcuffed the Astros in that series right before the All-Star break at Tampa Bay. He got holds in all three of his outings in a three-game series. Two hitless innings, one hitless inning, one hitless inning. So a total of four innings in that three-game series. Here's Gomez now leading it off. One for three. And there's strike one upstairs. Jepson getting back to back saves the 21st and 22nd of this month. Save number eight of the year two nights ago at Tampa Bay with a perfect ninth. One and one. He was acquired July 31st in a trade for two minor league pitchers. Two balls and a strike. A deal that could really help the Twins reach the playoffs this year, the way Jepson has thrown the ball. Two and two, a little jab stroke there by Carlos Gomez. Been a little more firm than Carlos was anticipating. Full count now to Gomez with Valbuena and Gonzalez to follow. Astros have been shut out eight times this season. A strikeout, one out. Nine strikeouts for Twins pitching. I don't think Kevin Jetson was trying to fool Carlos Gomez at all. He was just pumping heaters, daring him to square it up. Valbuena has walked twice. He's 0 for 1. Strike for Jepson, who was with the Angels from 08 through 14. Tip and it's 0 2. Jepson had a lot of control issues out there in Anaheim. Figured it out. He's always had that good electric fastball. Kind of a funky delivery, herky jerky, tough to repeat the release point. He's figured it out this year. Breaking pitch makes it 1 and 2. Kyle Gibson will be nine and nine if the Twins close out this game. The last Astro base runner was Valbuena's walk in the sixth. Two and two. It's pretty amazing that Casimir is going to go to seven and nine with a two point four. Five seven ERA. Yeah, it's amazing. He has been in some tough luck spots in the rotation this year. And this start with the three runs given up is only the third time that Astros pitchers have given given up two runs or more since August fifth. Popped up. Suzuki goes after it, reaching in off his mat. He couldn't hold it, and now he's grabbed. Saved him from a head first plunge. Now that would have been injury to insult. Did a good job of getting over there early. Gets a glove on it. Just squirts out the top. He braced himself there on that ledge.
Marlon Gonzalez is in the on deck circle. Inside for a ball and it's a full count. Twins pitchers have had nine shutouts this season. But their ERA as a staff was the 11th best in the American League coming into this game 4.18 and for August it was 5.04. Ball four Valbuena takes his third walk. He had 39 walks for the season coming into this game. Eight straight had been retired. Now the Astros get Marwin Gonzalez to the plate with a man on. He's 0 for 3. Hank Conger on deck. Astros have only been shut out eight times this season. Yep. Twice recently, one to nothing a couple of times in recent days. Foul back for a strike. Tampa Bay shut them out one nothing on a one hitter by Chris Archer last Thursday, a week ago, yesterday. Really, you know, other than the big 15 to 1 blowout. Yankee Stadium has struggled to score for a couple of weeks now. Stay tuned after the game as Bart Ennis and the manager Art Howe break down all the action from today's game, plus interviews from the clubhouse and much more on the Astros post game show presented by Houston Methodist. Gonzalez takes it and it's a ball. Two and one. Jepson was born in Anaheim and then played all those years for the Angels. They drafted him in the second round in 02. A shot into right field. Marwin Gonzalez with a single keeps it alive and gets the potential tying run to home plate. And it be Conger. Conger struck out in the seventh. Get these guys in the bottom of the order, get on base. The Astros like to hit home runs. One right now would tie this thing up. They've done some amazing things. 14 wins in the final at bat. Conger has gone deep eight times. Especially lately, it just seems that they have their best at bats when they're right up against it. Taking. Congress hitting 292 as a left handed batter with six bombs. Off the plate. Chris Carter is in the on deck circle. 2 0 now to Conger. Marisnik is due up next. Jepson misses again and it's 3 0. How about that? Good time to hit. Keyhole right now. Lock it down. Lock down that part of the strike zone you want to attack. Lock down that pitch you want to attack. If it is not the pitch you want in the zone you want, take it. On the corner. And you'll give him that one because now the count's 3 1. He's got to throw you another strike right here.
Three two. Struck him out. Two outs. Jefferson came back from a 3 0 count to get him. Again, and just attacking that zone with the fastball. Sometimes you get a little greedy as a hitter, wanting to tie that thing up, take a nice big hack. You can see the head leaking a little bit for Hank Conger. Took his eye off the ball. Chris Carter 179 17 homers 49 runs batted in as the pinch hitter for Marisnik who was 0 for 3. Altuve on deck. Strike to Carter. Carter went 0 for 7 in the Yankee series. Twins fans are up. Chris. The Astros have had four pinch hit homers this year. Carter is 0 for 9 in pinch hitting assignments. There's always that chance he connects. Strike two. a long throw on a hop to first it's wide and the bases are loaded Escobar could not make the accurate throw difficult play he one hop the throw but couldn't put it on the base and the bases are loaded now for Altuve put it in play you never know Good job of hustling by Chris Carter. You can never give up on any play in the big leagues because you never know which way it's going to go. If you're hustling, there's no excuse. And right there, it paid off. Now Altuve, two for four. Lowry on deck. Bases loaded, two outs. That's strike one. Altuve has hit 337 with runners in scoring position this year. Two for ten with the bases loaded. Close pitch. Call the ball. It's one and one. Ooh. Just don't give in. I mean, they're going to be a thorn in your side whether or not you're winning by three or 13. They're just going to be pesky, put together good at bats. How about the first game of the series? They're making Jepson throw pitches. If he is the closer, you've got to question whether or not he's able to come back tomorrow with the amount of pitches he's thrown. Altuve with a drive to center field. Buxton waiting, and the Twins win it three to nothing. The Astros battle in the ninth inning. They are turned away with no runs, two hits, three men left. The Twins claim the opener of this series. They've won seven of the last eight now. Final score: Minnesota three, Houston nothing. <laughs>